Hello. So, a week or two ago, I received this. It's the PowerShark, an ultra compact USB-C power supply for the Amiga 500, 600 and 1200, and I want to find out if it lives up to my expectations. So in this video, I'm going to try it out, then we'll test how well it can protect the Amiga by pushing it to its absolute limits. Finally, we'll take a quick look inside to see what makes this thing tick. Firstly, disclaimers. I just want to state that Mad Hacker's Lab, maker of the PowerShark, have not sponsored me to make this video. They don't even know I am making it. And with that out of the way, let's start by taking a look at what you get. It comes in this nice little box, and upon opening it, you can see the device. It really is small. You can see on the back, it has a connector for USB-C and a dedicated power switch. Inside the lid, we can find some instructions and a sticker. Now the first thing you need to understand here is the USB-C connection. And no, the PowerShark logo is not lost on me. Check out that shark mouth. That's a USB-C connector. Anyway, that aside, the first thing you need to know is that this won't work with probably every USB-C power supply that you have, and this is not their fault. Normal USB 1, 2 and 3 connectors provide only 5 volts. USB-C is a lot more intelligent, and it's possible for a USB-C device to communicate with the power supply and ask for a different voltage. This is known as USB-C Power Delivery, or PD. Now there are several revisions to this specification. The first revision allowed for 5 volts, 12 volts and 20 volts at different power levels. These six profiles were fixed and could not change. The second revision changed this to 5 volts, 9 volts, 15 and 20, dropping the 12 volts and the device can support multiple revisions of the standard. A third revision changed this entirely and allowed the device to request power between 3.3 volts and 21 volts in tiny 20 millivolt increments. And not surprisingly, this was revised again to include voltages as high as 28, 36 and 48, and with an adjustable voltage between 15 and 48 in steps of 100 millivolts. Wow, you better make sure you have a suitable USB-C cable for those power requirements. Finally, well, at least at the time this video was made, a revision 3.2 of the PD spec was launched. This updated the previous adjustable power supply range to go down as low as 9 volts. What a complicated mess! And there's a whole load of other protocols for power delivery too, which I'm not even going to get into. So why does this matter? Well, the PowerShark requires a USB-C power supply that can output 12 volts, and depending on which revisions of the spec they support, not all of them do. However, a handy list of tested power supplies have been provided. And I happen to have several USB-C power supplies here that do work. So, let's first test this out on some Amigas. First up, this is my Amiga 500 Plus with an RGB to HDMI inside and an A590 with blue SCSI inside, modded to use the Amiga's power supply. And as you can see, it's booting perfectly. No issues there. Looking a little closer, you can see that the PowerShark has indeed requested 12 volts and it's currently using about 1.6 amps. Just to test a little bit more, I'll use a floppy disk to get the motor spinning. OK, let's try my Amiga 1200. This one has a Pi Storm 32 Lite inside, and this appears to be working fine too, this time using only 900 milliamps. Once again, I'll insert a disk and make sure it's working OK. All good so far. And one interesting trick. You may have in the past power cycled your Amiga too quickly or had a momentary glitch in the power in your house. And this can sometimes give you a guru or software failure. Well, the PowerShark prevents you from doing this far too quickly, which is a nice little feature. So rather than getting random errors, you'll know there's been a power problem. So on first tests, it appears to work perfectly fine. However, let's see how it'll stand up to a fight. We'll test the device can actually deliver the specification on the PowerShark website using a good USB-C power supply. Next, we'll use a less powerful USB-C supply and try to overload it and see what happens. After that, we'll try using a USB-C power supply that can't deliver 12 volts. In round 4, we'll push the PowerShark hard and see how far beyond spec I can take it. Round 5 is all about suddenly increasing power usage, which can cause power spikes, especially in other voltages. This round will be quick. I want to short out the PowerShark to see if it firstly doesn't kill it, and secondly, to see if it handles it gracefully. Round 7 will be a sneaky round. I'll intercept the USB-C power supply and decrease it, simulating an unstable supply, and we'll see what happens to the PowerShark when it no longer gets a good 12 volts. And finally, round 8. I'll use the same setup as before, only this time instead of decreasing the voltage, we'll see how the PowerShark handles an over-voltage situation. And if it survives all of that, then I'll be impressed. 
and it will make a very reliable and safe supply for your Amiga too. Now, I'll be ignoring the minus 12 volt output from the PowerShark as its use is very limited, mostly just used by the audio circuits. To perform all of these tests, I've constructed a rather crazy looking test rig. What I have here is the PowerShark connected to two adjustable loads, as well as my oscilloscope. The oscilloscope has been set in AC mode because I want to see how much noise there is on the voltages produced. And as you can see right now, it's quite low, and that scale is in millivolts. It's actually possible that the noise you are seeing here is actually coming from the USB-C power supply and not the PowerShark at all. Anyway, the blue trace is 5 volts and the yellow 12 volts. Below the scope, you can see the PowerShark itself, and next to it are the two variable power loads. These allow me to force a specific current to be drawn from the PowerShark on the 5 volt and 12 volt supplies. To the right of them is a USB power meter which will measure the actual voltage and power on the USB-C cable before it goes into the PowerShark. With all that set up, let's see if the PowerShark can survive 8 rounds. Round 1! So let's start with the 12 volt rail, and I'll push that up to 1 amp. You'll notice that the moment the fan kicks in on these loads, the signal on the oscilloscope starts to go crazy. It is just the fan, which you can clearly see if I stop it for a moment with my finger. This does make the oscilloscope output a bit less useful, but I'll keep it here just in case. So the 12 volt seems fine anyway, so let's turn that off and try the 5 volt. This should go up to 4.5 amps perfectly fine. And indeed it does. You'll notice that the output from the USB-C power supply has dropped a little due to the current now being drawn. This could be the power supply or resistance in the cables. You may also have spotted that the noise on the 12 volt line has increased too. And this time, as you can see when I stop the fan, it's not from there. Again, this is most likely coming from the USB-C power supply, and is still a very small amount of noise. But more importantly, the 5 volts doesn't really seem to be getting any noisier. Just for reference, here's the noise generated from an original Amiga power supply, the heavy one. And this from the slightly lighter one. The noise level actually seems to be fairly similar, so it's actually probably just background. Ok, so let's try both the 5 and the 12 volts at the same time. Seems fine. I'm going to leave this running for a few minutes and come back with my thermal camera. I want to see if there's any obvious signs of heat from the power shark, and indeed it does look like it's starting underneath to get a little bit warm. That's no real surprise, but 41 degrees Celsius, that's 105 degrees Fahrenheit, I wouldn't consider a problem. Round 2! Next up, I'm swapping it to a different USB-C power supply. It's only rated up to 20 watts, so let's see what happens. First, I'll power up the 12 volts up to 1 amp, and now I'll slowly ramp up the 5 volts. Notice that as I approach and overtake 20 watts, the output from the power supply starts to drop. And upon reaching about 10.8 volts, both the boards go crazy! What's actually happened is the power shark has just cut the power. Note that the LED on the power shark went red. A red light on the power shark usually means something's not right and it's not happy. This clearly is a great feature, and I suspect it's detecting undervoltage, but we'll find out more about that later on. Also note how the power shark doesn't restore the power automatically, and you need to power cycle it. Well, off to a good start. It can easily deliver the standard specification, and it's able to detect when the power supply can't keep up with demand. But what about power supplies that can't handle the 12 volt output? Well. Round 3! This power supply I'm using can only output 5 volts, and the power shark noticed and won't power up the Amiga. That's very handy too. Great! Now the device apparently can go beyond its spec temporarily, apparently even up to 2 amps on the 12 volt and 6 amps on the 5 volt, although this is only supposed to be for a very short amount of time. So I'm going to test what happens if they're like this for longer. Round 4! So I'm increasing the power on the 12 volt rail and I'm taking it right up to 2.5 amps, and it's fine. I suppose it's not that much of a surprise given the USB-C power supply is doing most of the work here. So let's play with the 5 volt and ramp it up slowly beyond the 4.5 amps and see what happens. Now this little load generator thing doesn't go far enough, so I've added some resistors to bulk it up a little, so we'll need to watch the current with a multimeter. These resistors alone are drawing just under an amp, so let's ramp it up and see what happens. Wow! Ok, the electronic load gave up before we even reached 6 amps, at 5.8 amps. That's impressive for such a small device, and yes, those resistors did get quite hot. The thermal camera said around 140 degrees Celsius. That's 284 degrees Fahrenheit. Ok, so it's happy going way beyond spec. Next test, simulate sudden power surges from the Amiga. Maybe from a blown component or something. 
I'll simulate this by suddenly introducing a large load on the 5 volt rail. Round 5. And with a sudden jump to 4.5 amps, the power shark caught that and turned off the power. Let's try that again on the 12 volt rail. And this one's interesting, it tripped to almost exactly 2 amps. Looking good so far. Next up, how does it handle the computer failing with a short circuit? Now not something you'd want to do normally, but when some parts fail, or if you incorrectly plug in something you shouldn't have, it can happen. So, let's see what the power shark does and if it goes bang. Round, Round six. 6. Ok, so let's short out the 12 volt rail. Well, that made a little spark and then the power went out. But did the power shark survive? Sure did, after power cycling the power's back. Let's try that again on the 5 volt. Same again, power went off. And did the power shark survive? Of course it did. Now these last two tests are a little bit more crazy to set up. We saw before a possible under voltage situation that caused the power shark to switch off. In this test we'll try to confirm this. To simulate this under voltage situation I've added something extra in between the USB-C supply and the power shark that will let me interfere and change the voltage supplied via USB-C. So, starting on the left hand side you can see the USB-C power comes from the top and makes its way through this crazy rig. The multimeter on the left hand side is showing the voltage that I'm supplying from an external power supply. That is then combined via diodes into the output. This output then goes into my power meter and from there into the power shark. Round, Round seven. 7. Right now it's all running and stable. The power shark already requested 12 volts and has powered up. However because of my crazy rig it's actually only getting 10.8 volts. Now I'm going to turn on my external power supply and bring that USB power meter back out of sleep. And then I'm going to disconnect the USB-C. Note that it's actually all happy at this point. Now I'm steadily going to decrease the input voltage. Wow, when the power shark reached 10.5 volts it killed the power. So under voltage protection works perfectly. And finally, round, round eight. 8. In this test I'm going to simulate an over voltage situation where the USB-C power supply starts putting out more than 12 volts to see what the power shark does. And I'm using the same rig as before. I'm going to start by switching it all on and then slowly ramp up the external power supply. Ooh, once we hit 13.1 volts the power shark trips and cuts the power. That's fantastic! So this little device is indeed looking very good so far. Seems to have a fair amount of protection in place for our beloved machines. So let's have a look inside and see what makes it tick. And I'm not going to reverse engineer it, that wouldn't be fair to the obvious amount of work that's gone into this, but we will take a look at a few interesting bits. So to get into this we need to remove this little screw. And there we go. It all comes apart. Now that's one tightly packed board and note the power shark logo there too. There's obviously a lot of effort gone into this board. Let's take a closer look. See how they've made their own Amiga power connector. And there's power shark logos everywhere. This chip here is a P-channel MOSFET package. It's switching 12 volts so this may be responsible for the power supply cutoff to the entire device. This tiny little chip here hiding at the back is a switch capable of switching 2 amps. Given this rating and the fact that it also gets 12 volts this is probably controlling the 12 volt output to the Amiga. Now looking at the board from a different angle there's a 14 pin chip here labelled ARM N18974 and it took me a while to find out what it was. At first with ARM written there I thought it was a microcontroller but I was wrong. It's actually a 6 amp step down converter which I'm assuming is being used to generate the 5 volts given this can handle up to 6 amps. I think we can now see where those maximum power ratings are coming from. Now how am I sure this is the correct part? Well, the package is the correct shape and the markings also seem to make sense too. Now onto the back and ignoring yet another shark, there's two parts worthy of note. This tiny chip here is a DC to DC converter responsible for generating the minus 12 volts output. And lastly, this chip. Perhaps in some ways this is the most important of all. This chip handles the communication with the USB-C power supply to request the required 12 volts to start with. And it looks like it supports several power delivery protocols giving it the best chance of being able to select the required voltage. Now one last thing I really want to try is just to leave this running for a while at a normal load and measure how hot it does actually get. So I've set it up with the cover off with a 12 volt load of half an amp and a 5 volt load of 1 amp and I've left it powered like this for several minutes. Oh and here's something I didn't spot before, let me turn the lights off. Yes there's LEDs on the bottom. Looking more closely they're labelled 12 volts, minus 12 and 5 volts. That makes sense, a quick way to see if they're all working. Now bringing in my thermal camera we can see it's sitting quite happily at around 40 degrees centigrade on both sides. That's 104 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Now just for fun, I'm going to ramp up the power requirements to the maximum advertised spec and see how warm it gets. Well, that's close enough and we'll leave that for a few minutes. OK, it's up to 75 degrees Celsius, that's 167 degrees Fahrenheit. It's quite warm, but it's not over the top. The majority of the heat is coming from an inductor on the board, which I presume is part of the 5 volt supply. And there you have it, the power shark. A great little device, and it might even save your Amiga from a bad power supply with all the protection it offers. I was totally surprised it didn't contain any kind of microcontroller either. One thing I didn't mention was that if you get a TV or a monitor that powers from USB-C as well, then combined with a suitable power bank, your Amiga suddenly becomes totally portable, which is amazing! And this solution is so much nicer than those large power bricks from the old Amigas, and certainly a lot lighter too. Final thoughts? Well, if you ever team up with a shark for a fight, make sure it's a power shark. I'll certainly be getting another very shortly. I'm super impressed with this device. That being said, I hope you found this interesting, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one!